Careers and billions of dollars are made online every day from people who know how to use the internet to their advantage. Stock trading, blogging, graphic design, freelancing of all sorts, those are just a few. The list is truly endless. And from the comfort of your own home, why not use the internet to make some serious dough? Well, creating those online endeavors take time, effort, and skills. Skills that many people don't have the patience to learn. And like most things, the internet has a dark side. A very dark side. Hence an underground but growing industry. Online scamming. These scams come in loads of different forms. A Nigerian prince may need you to save him in trade for the royal jewels. Or a Russian babe is really interested in your Pokemon collection and needs some money in order to get one of her own. But my favorite one of all, the gift card scam. Please wait, don't leave the computer. Please don't touch your computer, leave it for oh. me. Oh honey, I you just placed the don't. order, it's fine. And when they're not getting grandma'd by Kit Boga, they make a killing. An estimated $3 billion is what is taken from Americans every single year from scams. And that's just what is reported. These scammers make enough to get an entirely new phone when their screen cracks. But never enough to pay Becky a 10% tip after a night on the town. There's an underground currency out there that some scammers will do almost anything to get their hands on. That includes blackmail, coercion, manipulation, provocation, DDoSing, and doxing. This currency I'm talking about has been around longer than Bitcoin, and it's something you might not expect. RuneScape Gold. That's right, the online gaming currency has been exploited to transfer millions of dollars from the hands of innocent RuneScape noobs to line the pockets of scammers for years. And this currency is a serious thing. It's traded for cryptocurrencies and cash all the time. There are entire websites dedicated to purchasing and selling it for a profit. Some Redditors claim that this currency alone is propping up Venezuela's shattered economy, and people have been sentenced to jail for stealing RuneScape gold. Although player-run gambling has been officially ruled a bannable offense by the creators of RuneScape, the worst place in Gilinor is the Duel Arena, because if the game creators are hosting the gambling system, then it's okay, right? This is the place that kids are lied to and cheated. This is the place where players quit the game, the place where gambling addictions have been sparked and been fueled for years on end, where real life bank accounts have been overdrawn and others have been topped up. Of course, I've fallen victim to a few scams here when I was younger. But now that I'm older, I can play ball against these scammers that prey on all of RuneScape's players. I've done it already, and I'm doing it again. But this time, the stakes are higher, the methods are different, and there are a lot more scams outside of the Duel Arena to thwart. I've pried into the underbelly of the RuneScape community and have insider information on how these scammers do what they do. More on that later. But you should know that these scammers are predominantly American and British men. Literate people with plenty of opportunity around them that may have even had goals of starting a real career. But through one bad decision or another, now spend 8 to 14 hours a day scamming children instead. Sometimes when we don't have the patience to learn, we become the worst part of ourselves. Recently, I've been listening to lots of books that encourage me to fulfill my full potential, like the four hour work week. That's why I'm proud to be working with Audible. I've been a subscriber for almost a year and the books I listen to there help me keep my mind on the ball and stay focused on my goals. And listening to other people's stories helps me reflect and improve myself. If I wasn't doing that, what else would I be doing with my time? The most successful people I've met have consumed an insane amount of books. I can pretty much do anything while reading these books, and that's why Audible is such a good resource, allowing you to read audiobooks from anywhere and on any device. You can even switch between devices and pick up where you left off. On top of that, you can download all your books and listen to them offline. Eventually, it was just too much to pass up, so I had to become a member a year ago, and I've never looked back. I swear by Audible, they're free for the first 30 days, and actually you help me a lot by just signing up for that free trial. If you smack that link in the description below this video, it'll take you right to where you need to be. And I hope you learn from it just as much as I have in the last 12 months. Oh snap, there's one of those scammers. Any choice last words, choose wisely, and I'll make it quick.
I'm only going to enter a stake as long as I'm sure I have a good advantage over the scammer. So I first try to demonstrate to them that I have a good amount of money. Once they see that, two things happen. They get interested and they offer a very high amount at first. That's good for me because the more I can get out of these scammers, the better. Adding one mil at a time here very slowly made me seem more like a vulnerable noob that this scammer could easily exploit. He doesn't have mage. Is this the first? Yes, this is it, baby! This scammer was doing the food on scam, but he didn't know about the Staff of the Dead. Not only does it venom my opponent, but using the special attack halves all melee damage. Also, I'm healing with every single cast. Blood Barrage heals me a quarter of the damage that I deal, so this one was a pretty much instant win. Yes, good fight and good riddance with half HP left, no food used, 15 mil win. And another food scammer that falls victim to the Stav's powers. Oh, he did it. Yes! 20 mil win, baby! This is the perfect opportunity because he only had a few food. Really, he just doesn't have a chance. Like, he only had five food. Oh, don't get KO'd, friend. Come on, bro. <laughs> Gotta make this uh, exciting for me. You have a 1% chance. Goodbye. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Did the same thing with this guy, but he only wanted to stake 6 mil. 6 mil, I'll take it. Pecker Love 9. Advertising a stake for whipping or DDSing. But if we take a look at his inventory, we see some other items in there that help him get the advantage over unsuspecting players. I type in my offer of 280 mil in the hopes that I can get this guy on rules where he has no chance of winning. And although I couldn't put movement on to have a 100% chance of winning, I was pretty happy with my odds. He matches my stake of 280 mil and accepts the first screen. This time I don't have my Staff of the Dead, but just like him, I have Vengeance. I quickly switch my spellbook to Ancients and we duke it out with the Dragon Daggers. I knew the Code I Wand with Blood Barrage was better than the Rapier. I did take a statistical advantage in entering this stake, which my opponent did not like, but it was a bit too close for comfort. I tried to duel him again, but he didn't like the fact that I both vengeanced and then switched to ancients during that stake. The reason that this mage anti-scamming works so effectively is because the clients that calculate the advantage that they have over me don't do that with magic versus melee. They only do it melee versus melee. However, this is only a simple excel sheet. I'm sure the clients that they have to calculate odds and make sure that they're getting at least a 55% advantage they do much more elaborate things than this. I recently did an entire RuneScape journey from scratch on a new account in my Playing RuneScape Properly series. I bring it up because I started anti-scamming on that account, which is partially the reason why I ended the series. Anyway, I uploaded the entire series in a single video. It may be in your YouTube recommendations in the next couple days, so check it out if you get a chance. My goal, to make billions of GP off of these movement on tricksters at the Duel Arena. There's a mechanic in the game that doesn't allow two people to die at the same exact time. There has to be a clear winner in every duel. There's a clear winner almost every time just by assigning one player in the duel first priority on hitting the opponent. That means their hit shows up first. Take note that this guy goes around a corner and then manages to hit me first, which shouldn't be allowed. That's what these tricksters do. They turn movement on or obstacles on in order to get the first hit on unsuspecting players. I managed to do the same exact thing to him and take back first hit. I should maintain focus because these stakes can always turn around. Fortunately, even though he did manage to get the first hit on me, I still won the stake.
two free hits that stake. Could have gone three probably if it lasted longer. I don't know what this guy's doing. He thinks I'm just a YouTuber. <laughs> he thinks I'm so bad at the game that he just keeps giving me his money. The majority of the duel arena consists of scammers and odd stakers that take advantage of the normal players of the game, but surely there are benefits to the duel arena that make 8 years of manipulation justified. No, in fact, my findings are the opposite. Okay, okay look what I can do. Whoever has one bill type 1, I'll chuck the one bill, I'll give you 1.2 on the win. If I lose it, I owe you 1.2 bill. This live streamer is just one of thousands of people that have become latched onto gambling because of the duel arena. He just offered 20% interest on a loan of 1 billion GP, giving away 200 mil just to have another shot at winning a stake. And the way I see it is if you can spend, if the best money making in RuneScape is 10 mil an hour doing really efficient theater of blood or whatever, and you can go stake and win 100 mil from one stake, your mindset and your attitude to the game will forever be ruined. You will not enjoy normal gaming. You will not enjoy normal gaming on RuneScape because your head will just think, I could make this in three seconds at the arena. So everything loses its value and it's just I couldn't have said it better myself and that is perfectly demonstrated by this next clip. Take a look. I mean, it makes sense. The people who are mad at me are all Iron Men and PVMers. Like, like they sit at, they sit trying to PVM for for three months to make what I make in a day. But it's all good. All good. I understand why they get mad. That's right. These guys get loans from their viewers and go billions of GP in debt. He got out of 24 bill debt, and now three days later has 10 bill debt. Okay. Okay. As expected. These guys take loans from their viewers and sometimes give 20 to 30% interest. But what about people that aren't live streamers? Well, they go out and buy GP, lose it to the scammers, and then buy it back from the scammers afterwards. Not directly, they probably don't know they're doing it, but they do it all through third party vendors like websites. No, but like Walla well, Metallurgy, like, like the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. So there was this streamer, I'm not gonna name names, he was in debt. And he was staking it all, and he was rich, he was very rich at one point, and he got clean. And he would RWT to buy gold and try to make it back, and try to sell and shit. And I know this guy, right? And I swear to God, bro, I am not lying as I say this. I swear to God, I am not lying. You just see random shit in his house disappearing. I'm talking about his new curtains disappearing. Like, like 50 mil 07, like I'm talking about his, his, his pool sticks. His is disappearing on Craigslist, man. You you see like his like his <laughs> his laptops and everything this is disappearing, and then you know what happened? Some guy came in his stream and said, "Yo, man, what happened to the TV in the back?" I swear to God, he put his head down and was like, "We don't talk about that no more." <laughs> oh shit! His new TV disappeared from the back, bro. There's no way he sold that. His daughter's toys and everything, man. I. IZPA man, the flat screen too? That's crazy. Yeah, so all enjoys to take he's done 10 1000 percent returns on loans for staking. Oh my god. And he his max goes up to four thousand percent. Oh my god. Uh um <laughs> on top of the four thousand percent, you also gotta realize he's done the title for his car. Well, almost done that. He didn't actually do that, but it was it was it was on the table, and then he bought gold, I think, instead. So, did the person that was getting offered the title for his car just decline? <laughs> no, he was he was gonna take it, kind of waiting for it to happen, and they ended up, like I said, just buying gold instead and going through that way because he got he got paid from work. And when this guy offers these lens, the payments of you know three hundred percent, thousand percent, four thousand percent, he's legit, right? Has he yeah, paid? He's, he's done it. He's paid it back. And tell me again what he does with the money when he earns it. Loses it, buys more gold, goes back, 
does the same thing again. Because once you buy gold and it goes wrong, you'll just keep buying. Can I get it? I mean, until you make back even that money that you just lost to buy that gold. Like, 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 okay, listen, I, I, I know people, I'm not going to say names, bro. Like, like I said, I'm telling you, bro, it's, it's a very, I know like over 20 people like that. I know somebody that lost like 40, 50 grand, like, like bit to see staking. Like, it's scary shit, man. It's scary shit. Voila. But let's talk about the beneficiaries. On August 16th of 2018, the Duel Arena tax was implemented into the game. And on February 28th of 2020, Jagex released a statement that 17.5 trillion GP had been taken away from the game because of this 1% tax. Sometimes the tax is less with lower stakes, but I'm just gonna assume it's 1%. By multiplying by 100, we have an approximate amount of GP that was circulated around the Duel Arena during that time, 1.7 quadrillion. And by extrapolating linearly to the current date, we have a much higher number for how much was circulated. My math, by using an average RuneScape GP price, brought me to the conclusion that approximately $2.7 million has circulated around the Duel Arena. But that's only in the last two years since the tax was implemented, and this has been going on for many more years than that. Crum is another YouTuber that has made videos on a lot of the scams that happen in RuneScape. It's, it's not my fault that you feel that I am a scammer, um, but I'm telling you that I'm not going to keep any of this. You're going to get it back. It's not my fault you're compulsive, bro, all right, and you feel this way. That's not my fault. Hi, Crum. How's it going? Hey, not too bad. And yourself? Good, thank you. So you've had experience with covering the story of the Duel Arena. Tell me more in detail. Yeah, so I covered odd staking this was nearly a year ago now i actually got into like one of their discord servers and you know the people that that were doing this were making like very big money we're talking like uh like it was thousands of dollars a month i forget the exact numbers and most of them wouldn't talk to me i was warned before i made the video uh from the guy that ran the clan not to do this right and uh other people in the clan saying hey don't cover this at all until like, this is fixed by Jagex, otherwise we're going to be very mad at you. And, uh, anyways, I found one guy that would actually talk about it. And he was, like, very vague. Like, his whole aim from doing that video is he kind of wanted to uh, make odds staking look like it was good for other people who didn't have the odds to do, right? He wanted to bring more customers to himself. So I took advantage of that. I asked him a lot of questions. I cut a bunch of his BS out. And I uploaded a video that ultimately exposed odd staking, showed that these people make money in the end and that you lose money in the end. Uh, and the result from that was, you know, uh, hours after the video went up, I was getting death threats. People had found my Facebook account. People had sent messages to the email of the head instructor at the college I was attending at the time wow. uh, saying that I was going to bring a bomb to the school tomorrow. Right. So like I had to handle that situation um, and eventually like I, I just removed the video. It wasn't worth it whatsoever, you know, for the amount of views that it was getting. For these people to be potentially involving the FBI, you know, bomb threats are a very serious thing and they don't take that lightly. So for these people to risk getting investigated and potentially imprisoned for doing these things, they must be making a lot of money in order to have the resources to do these things as well as risk it. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, some of it was like an astounding amount of money, more than I've seen in any of the other illicit activities that take place in this game. Um, I think if I remember right, some guy was making upwards of like $15,000 US a month wow. from this. Um, yep. And like, you know, their, their Discord server is full of, of like gold websites that buy in bulk from them, like at billions in a time, uh, because they're one of the biggest suppliers. So it's an hours game. You know, the more hours they put in, the more profit that they see. And they've uh, automated this too, right? Because you can't sit there and play the game 24 hours a day. And if you want to make massive profit, like 15 grand a month, you need to have bots and many of them running 24 seven, seven days a week. And that's what a lot of these guys in this server were doing. I, I, seen a, I seen a screenshot, I'll see if I can find it, where some dude had like 30 accounts running at the Duel Arena, all mm -hmm. X staking. Mm -hmm. When I upload a video on these illicit things that are taking place in old school RuneScape, if there's any sort of money involved, people do message me, not to the extent that they did with this X staking video, um, but you know, to some sort of extent with threats where they want me to take that video down because they now fear because I made a video on it um, that Jagex is finally going to take some sort of action and prevent them from doing what they're doing. Right? They want to keep their 
their uh, their investment in place. They don't want to lose that. What do you think the probability is that they're actually going to take real life action against you or maybe even me after this video goes up? Uh, I, I don't know. It's happened in the past. People have died from swatting. True. If I was to react now, if I was to go back to when I first uploaded that Xing video, uh, absolutely do not take the video down. That's the worst thing you can do with a threat. If somebody threatens you, you know, uh, don't cave to it whatsoever because that gives them power. And you think that's a that's a good, powerful move you can make to kind of take power away yeah, from these you... negative, horrible people. <laughs> that's remarkable, the lengths that these people go to to secure their, their revenue. Well, Crumb, thank you for your time and your insight. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, actually there is. I think if your viewers tried Audible with your free link in the description, they would enjoy that. My man. Once again, these movement on tricksters have lower stats, but they believe they can compensate for that by using the edges of the arena to get an extra hit in the stake, which is a lot better than just a few attack and defense levels. But sometimes they overestimate themselves, and that's where this biggest stake so far comes into play. 495 mil. <laughs> He tried to counter my first hit switch, but he didn't manage to do it. If he had stepped one tile southwest instead of where he did, he would have been very likely to counter my move and then win the stake. Despite my big lead in the beginning, he almost came back there. And with an almost 1 billion GP pot, the stakes were high to hit that maneuver correctly. But we're not done there. Time for the 1 billion GP stake. Oh my god, I won. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I won one bill against one of these tricksters. Yes, I won! So I have a lot of money now. There are bots at the Grand Exchange that detect when people are wearing gear that costs a lot of money. Then they are targeted for lures and scams. I was at the Grand Exchange to trade a friend when right afterwards a guy approaches me. He told me to bank everything and that's when I turned on my recorder. He told me he's making a video for his YouTube channel, blah blah blah, basically trying to get me to a secluded area at which point he teleports out to Barbarian Outpost. And as I'm the anti-scamming guy, I follow him, just to see what's going on and to document my findings. I'm intentionally playing it very slow, pretending like it took me a long time to figure out how to get to the Barbarian Outpost. Obviously, I've been there thousands of times before, but anything to trick this guy. He then tells me we have to be matching mummies, implying that he's going to give me the full mummy outfit plus the pharaoh's scepter, which all of that combined is actually worth quite a bit. But first, he asks me to reduce my health by drinking lots of Zamorak brew doses. He then tells me to wear the Amulet of Avarice, which gives me a skull above my head and makes me lose all of my items if I die. He then trades me as if he's going to give me an extra set of his full mummy outfit and the pharaoh's scepter. Now this is the point where most people would think, okay, this is too good to be true. Enter the second lurer. He tells me that the pharaoh is a one-click teleport, 
and if I go to a PvP world and click that item, then it will take me to a multi-zone in the middle of the desert where I could easily die. Now you might be thinking that's a very good thing he's warning you about the lore, but that isn't the lore. These two are working together to give you the impression that you know what's going on, when in reality, it's a double lore. Okay, I half suspect that this guy is part of the lore, but he just told me what the scepter does, so it's definitely not going to be the one-click teleport scepter lure. It's going to be something beyond that if this guy is a part of it, which I do think he is. So, yeah, we'll see though. At this point, I knew exactly what the lore was. This building is incredibly dangerous. In fact, the tile I'm standing on is the only safe area in this entire place. Anywhere else, and I could die. Given my low hit points level, it was time to do what he said and pull out my gear that I had at the Grand Exchange, but also a few extra goodies. The lore is to trade me and get me to walk away from the safe tile. But with one eating animation, I was able to heal up to 80 hit points. So it'd be very unlikely that I would die from anybody sneaking up on me. Plus, I was watching the minimap. I just wanted to see how this lore was done, so I didn't plan ahead. All I brought out were manta rays, brews, and karambons. But maybe if I had time to get myself some weaponry and a super combat potion, I could have a fighting chance at killing this guy. Oh my god, no way! No way! Holy crap! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> that is the- That makes the video. That makes the video. Oh my good god. My god. Look how much I made off this lure. I just PK'd 56 mil off a lure. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Holy shit. Big shout out to Sir Pugger for exposing these guys in lots of his videos. Drops the respect, yeah. Can't say the same for you. I think that was very much deserved. Good riddance. Good riddance. To this day, I still have no idea why he was taking off his robes as he died. Maybe if he wasn't focused on that, he could have been eating instead and he probably would have lived. But yeah, no idea what he was doing. I made an entirely new account just to track these three lures in case they ever changed their names. Added them to my friends list, so if they ever do, I'll know that they did. But hopefully by the time I post an update on these guys, at least one of them will have been banned. Not keeping my hopes up though. I have a lot more anti-scams to show you, but this video is getting just a bit too long and I don't want to take up too much of your day. But for more anti-scams and my next update on this situation, all I ask is you try Audible for free with the link in the description below. Once again, the money I made in this video is a droplet in the ocean of scams that happen every day, but it was good to give them a much bigger taste of their own medicine.